Once again, coming at you from Low Definition TV, it's... MCTV Live, I'm Justin Pontnier, and this is my outspoken compadre, Mr. Greg Bowderstein. Yes, and with that said, let's get on to the business at hand. Today's show, jam-packed as always, but then again, why would we have a show if we weren't jam-packed? What we got coming up today? We have an 80s retro video by Josh Cuss. And we are not going to tell you who the artist is, we want to kind of hold your attention. But let me tell you, I got two words for you, actually three words. Sean Bell Humor ripped. As well, we've got right. a piece on the change from IG to Sobeys. And CTS closure. That's right, the CTS closure a little controversial. So sit back, grab some popcorn, don't eat it in CTS because MCTV is coming up right now. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Mr. B, you're looking quite tan today. Well, thank you very much for uh, noticing. Uh, I was lucky enough to spend two weeks in Hawaii. Very nice. Over spring break. And let me tell you, it was nice. It was a little rainy, mm. but uh, you know what? Anything beats the snow of Edmonton at that time of year. Now, speaking of Hawaiian. That's right. We got a uh, Hawaiian dance coming up that's tomorrow right. night. We have that dance coming up. And according to Natalie Simmons, the tickets are $5. What about at the door? According to Natalie Simmons, it's also five dollars. So if you go to the door and there's six dollars, don't blame us. Just find Natalie Simmons and give her a piece of your mind because that's the information she gave us. So, but uh, that said, the dance is what time to what time? Seven to eleven. Seven to eleven. So make sure you show up early and make sure that when they tell you to get the heck out of the school, you please comply with the supervisors there. So, anyways, here's a piece. I don't know what it is. Our local Mournville IGA garden market has just changed to the new Sobeys, but has the transition been more than just a name change? Mournville's favorite grocery store made the switch just last month. We talked to a few of the managers to gather some specifics about our new Sobeys. Bringing a new look to the store. Um, we're expanding our fresh departments, which is the produce, the bakery, the deli, the meat department. We're uh, expanding those departments to have to make sure that we've got the fresh product that the customer wants. There's new products coming into those departments, and there's also an expanded assortment in the grocery department. Um, the service levels, we're really concentrating on service, although we always had good service. We're upping our service levels, and now that we are a national company, IJs were across the country, but their distribution center for us was just Western based. So going to Sobeys now, it's a total Canada wide distribution and it enables us to drop our prices as our costs have become lower. So we're going up with service and down with costs. Well, in the grocery side of things, we uh, have a brand new fresh selection of uh, salad dressings. It's a lower profile shelving, it's a fresh, good for you look. And uh, I'll say since the changeover, for, for sure we've noticed an increase in sales in that section of the store. We've also expanded on our uh, kids' snacks, as in Mournville's a young community here. 
and uh, but that's taken off for sure. Uh, just a fresh selection and the emphasis more so than uh, before on the freshness, like in grocery specifically. Like grocery has a wide variety of products, but uh, pushing the fresh products now is our number one priority as well as serving our customers, of course. So that's been the biggest change I've noticed since changing over to Sobeys. I'd like to apologize on behalf of Mr. B for that uh, little slip up. Isn't that right, Mr. B? Here's your chance to redeem yourself. What's going on tonight? Let me tell you, I'm really stoked about this evening because tonight is open house and we get to showcase the school to the entire community and anyone who wants to come out and check out the school. That's right. Uh, is there going to be anything having to do with curling? Well, there's going to be some MCTV because we're doing the, uh, the, um, the game show. Oh, right. We've right. got the Coral Society coming out. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got pretty much every area, but I don't think we have any ice in the school, so unfortunately we can't do a curling demo. Oh. However... We do have a curling piece right now. Right now. It is a takeoff of Men and Brooms put together by Nadine Ricard and Brianne Ricard. So please enjoy it. Curling's like riding a bike. I need some advice. About what? This girl. Well, come on, here, girl. Oh, you noticed? From R and R Films comes a movie about four very unlikely teammates, three incompetent curlers and one last chance for the gold. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our annual Golden Broom Bond Steel. I'm feeling a general sense of dread. <laughs> This spring, there's more than one way to sweep the girl off her feet. Never been away, hey. Never seen a day break. Leaning on my pillow in the morning. Lazy day in bed. Music in my head. Coming to a theater near you. All right, well, we're back. Uh, I got a question for you. Okay. What is your favorite 80s music video? My favorite 80s music video would have to be I Ran by the Flock of Seagulls. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. That is not the secret mystery 80s video that we're going to show you today. So you can now narrow down that it's not Flock of Seagulls. Right now, I'd like to switch some gears. Oh. I'm trying to get a little bit serious here. Last week, we took a little bit of a break out of our busy schedule to uh, reflect on the sacrifice made by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at last week's Easter celebration. That's and right. Uh, there was all kinds of... Uh, Great presentations, including a song by Courtney Mavitt, a story by Judy Prokopchuk, and a great video, which you're going to see now by Jessica Gunn and Keisha Corso. That's right. They did a, a, a video to the music, uh, to the lyrics of Josh Groblin about, um, well, about, about community, about sacrifice, about, uh, about Jesus Christ. So enjoy it. Till you come 
and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shore. So apparently we're on that camera now. So anyways, uh, JC got a quick question for our floor director, JC's over here. JC, what's your favorite 80s artist? Boy George. Boy George. Well, I can definitely tell you that it's not Boy George. It's nope. not Culture Club. Nope. And we'll reveal it later on in the show. It'll be actually in the next segment. That's right. Coming up now, though, I want to talk to you a little bit about a big event coming up at the end of the month. Grad. Graduation. Graduation. <laughs> it's like he's finishing all my sentences here. It is uh, on April the 30th. And speaking of grad, we have a piece right now on... Uh, garbage. Garbage. There's Greg, garbage. It's all about the G's today. So we sit under crack reporters, Lauren Velsink, Suzanne Gates, to get the lowdown about garbage in our school. Usually after 4 p.m., CTS area is buzzing. But after a decision by administration, CTS area is closed after 4 p.m. and before 7.45 a.m. Well, basically, uh, we had a number of problems in the CTS area. We had a lot of vandalism, and as you know, that technology is very expensive in that room. And because um, computers were being damaged and we had high replacement costs, we needed to make sure that the area was supervised and when it wasn't able to be supervised, then we had to close it down. Students that actually utilize the technology are getting the short end of the stick. Well, I think it's a necessary thing. Uh, I feel bad for students that utilize the technology properly, but unfortunately a few characters have wrecked it for everybody else and it's necessary to keep our area running properly. We've seen what the administration said. Now was time to see what the students had to say. I think it's stupid. We should have free reign just like we used to because, yeah, things got vandalized, but why punish us for one person's mistakes? Because there's, like, how many students in the school? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the rule lately. Although some students don't like it, supervision seems to be the main issue. I believe that when students have extra projects or extra work to do for their curricular um, demands in the classes, that if a teacher is asking you to do that, then the teacher needs to be available to supervise that time that you need in the lab. So if you're being asked to go above and beyond and add technology into your assignments or do extra assignments requiring technology, you should be supervised by a qualified staff member. We realize that this may seem redundant to students, but we should expect it to be enforced for a long period of time, and students should plan to get their assignments done before 4 p.m. This is Sean Shimka reporting. Again, we're on this camera, apparently. Our floor director doesn't know which camera we're on, so <laughs> our apologies. He's just, our director's putting this on the camera just to take us off. Oh, of course he is. Uh, sorry, he's just doing his job back there. Anyways, what were we going to talk about in the first place? It's, it's the huge... The moment we've all been waiting for. It's not Flock of Seagulls. 
It's not living on a prayer. In fact, it is living oh, on a prayer. It's not living on a prayer. Oh, so he can't sorry. really keep it out. He can't I, really I can't keep, keep a secret. secret. This is put together by our very own Josh Cast. And you know what? I have to admit, I'm actually proud of him. You know, I'm almost like a like a like a like a father figure here because this is the first video that doesn't involve chickens, doesn't involve jump cuts, it actually involves some planning. So you know what, Josh? My hair's off to you. So sit back, folks, and enjoy it. Living on a prayer. What is litter? Litter is simply waste that was not disposed of properly. When you put something in the trash can, it's garbage. But when you throw it on the ground, it's litter. We went around MCHS to get teachers' points of view on the issue of garbage control. We have a few initiatives. Um, one is destination conservation, which is where students have an increased awareness of their environment and what garbage does to their environment, um, as well as things like conserving power, conserving energy, those kinds of things. I see it, yeah. When I'm driving, I see go by school, I see lots of garbage outside. I'm, I'm playing. I think our school grounds are kept quite clean. Actually. Communities have community cleanup programs whereby schools get involved with a number of students taking garbage bags out onto the schoolyard and into the community and doing sort of spring cleanup. That's kind of the best time of year to do that. I know teachers encourage students to clean up when they're finished. Uh, other than that, uh, I know that Mr. Mini works like a tireless trooper, so I think that's pretty well taken care of. You know, it's something that we need to constantly remind. Um, students and adults up to put their garbage away in the garbage can and we're all busy and uh, we just have to make an effort. We went around the school to get students points of view about littering. Oh yeah, there's a garbage problem. People leaving it there. Bring it around and stuff, I guess. Maybe there's not enough garbage cans or something for them, I don't know. Because odds are I'll end up slipping on something and fall on my butt. Not really. It's not really a big deal, I don't think. Because, like, it's just not. More garbage cans. Um, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe they could get in trouble or something. I think the answer to all the litter problems is to recycle. I'm Suzanne Gates. All right, so, folks, th this has been kind of a gong show the last few segments. Apparently, we were ahead by a segment, and no one really noticed. Apparently, all you folks out in TV land noticed. But yeah, so, so we apologize. Yeah, we so like gave away. the last two segments we just saw were: first of all, we saw the CTS closure news report talking about the closure. That's when we started screwing up. And the last piece wasn't, in fact, living on a prayer. Any fool uh, would have known. Would have known that we actually just saw the garbage piece that we were supposedly seeing tw two segments before. So we apologize. So. Now, without any further ado. We've kept you in suspense long enough. So. It is, so you now know what the video <laughs> is. You know that JC can actually edit a video now. You know that it's Bon Jovi. You know that, who are the three members again? Uh, of the band? Yeah, there's Bon Jovi, Sambara, and Josh Cust. Cust. So anyways, other than the fact that there's way too much headroom in this shot. Let's go.
Apparently our floor director is rather vocal today, so we apologize for him screaming over the air like that. Uh, one last thing we want to mention before the show ends today, we have got uh, the Nickel Drive. That's right. Coming up next week, it's uh, April 21st, uh, raising money with your Block 1, uh, Day 1 Block 5 classes. All the money's going to charity. If you don't know what's going on, check with your Day 1 Block 5 teacher. They can give you all the details. That's a class before and after lunch. That's right. Make sure you bring in all your nickels. Uh, next, next show, we got some great... Uh Great reports. We got a April 27th, next show. Right, next right. show, yep. The open house uh, news report, grad preview, bike trip news report, drug news report, Stills Canada. It's jam packed. That's so right. stay tuned, enjoy two weeks from now. See you later. Later. Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. Tired of living like a blind man. I'm sick of sight without a sense of feeling in this.